In far-off galaxies, there's a cosmic spectacle happening three times a day. Gamma ray bursts. These bursts are like supercharged fireworks in space, way more powerful than all the nuclear weapons on Earth combined. But if one of these bursts gets too close to Earth, it could be game over for all life here. In this video, we're going to take a trip into this vast space, discovering the amazing sights and the sort of scary things hiding in the deep corners of the universe. This is the story of the beautiful and sometimes a bit scary side of deep space, where the incredible and the frightening come together in a never-ending space dance. Gamma Ray Burst Imagine a massive star in our galaxy explodes, sending out a burst of energy called a gamma ray burst. It's the grandest explosion since the Big Bang. Now, normally, we don't see it coming. No warning signs, no heads up. And when it hits, it's bad news. The radiation from the burst heats up our atmosphere, making the ozone layer thin out. When that happens, temperatures go haywire worldwide, causing storms, tsunamis, and hurricanes. It's like a domino effect, and most life on Earth gets incinerated. Sounds like a sci-fi movie, right? But if a gamma ray burst from just 100 light years away hits us, this could become a real-life disaster. Now, gamma ray bursts are like the rock stars of space explosions. They're insanely bright, packing as much power as the sun gives off in its entire 10 billion year life. These bursts are so powerful that when they were first discovered in the 1960s, scientists thought they were coming from our own galaxy, the Milky Way. But here's the twist. These bursts actually come from millions and billions of light years away. That's like saying their power is out of this world, literally. One burst can be as bright as a million trillion suns. Wrap your head around that. So why do these bursts happen? It turns out it's a star's grand finale. When a massive star, at least 10 times the mass of the sun, kicks the bucket, it collapses and forms a black hole. But not just any black hole, it's a star that won't go down without a fight. Some of the star's guts resist getting sucked into the black hole's center, forming a fast-spinning disk of matter. At the same time, plasma jets shoot out from the poles, unleashing dangerous gamma rays into space. It's like the star's final fireworks before it explodes or goes supernova. Here's the kicker. Only one in every 300 gamma ray bursts is aimed at Earth. But if it happens within 100 light years, it's bad news. We're talking about an explosion 500 times brighter than the sun, with enough gamma rays to mess up our atmosphere big time. Now, this nightmare scenario has a tiny chance of happening, like one in a trillion. So no need to lose sleep over it. Humanity has been around for a while, and we've dodged these gamma ray explosions so far. While the chances are low, the effects can be astronomical. We're talking about potential hazards for life on Earth, like mass extinctions and some serious cosmic drama. So, even though gamma ray bursts are far from our everyday worries, it's good to know what's going on in the cosmic neighborhood. A star called Sun. In Douglas Trumbull's silent running, there's this spaceship headed straight for doom. Same goes for Claire Dennis's High Life and Cecile Richards' Under a Star Called Sun. Doom is non-negotiable. Now, Under a Star Called Sun is not a movie. It's a cool interactive story with pixel art and bits of text. It's about a lone cosmonaut stuck in a spaceship that's basically playing chicken with the sun. Even though all three, Silent Running, High Life, and Under a Star Called Sun, are on a one-way trip to destruction, there's this weird thing they all share. The main character in each piece is crazy about taking care of plants on their doomed ship. Why? Well, in Silent Running, those plants are the last living bits of green from a wasted earth like a final memory. High Life? The plants are food, survival stuff. Here's the kicker. None of these characters are going to make it for long. Yet, they're all obsessed with these plants, keeping up their plant routines even when the end is waving at them. I check on the plants, look for bugs, see if the soil's wet, dust off the leaves, and when no one's looking, I hum to them, they say. It's like a weird doomed plant club. Just like the crew in Solaris, the astronaut in A Star called Sun is stuck in memories. The ships inside sometimes turn into a street corner from their past. Memories also mess with the main character in High Life, random childhood flashbacks without warning. It's kind of like how the guy's child in the movie only knows Earth from messed up images on the ship's busted hard drive. And get this, instead of the sun, the ship in High Life is diving straight into a black hole. Crazy, right? 
Yet the main character keeps raising his kid, giving her whatever life he can, no matter how short. Even with the whole universe collapsing around them, these stories say these moments matter. The memories are heavy. I wish I remembered more, says the person in a star called Sun at the end. Wish I took more pics. Dark Forest Hypothesis. All right, so there's this spooky theory called the Dark Forest Hypothesis. It's like this idea that space seems empty because any noisy species out there gets zapped by unfriendly space creatures. Imagine making too much noise and suddenly, boom, you're in trouble with these space bullies. Now think about all those sci-fi stories where humans mess with things they shouldn't have. Sometimes aliens show up at our front door, wrecking stuff. But you know what's even scarier? Meeting aliens way out there in the vast unknown of space. These aliens feel like the embodiment of the mysterious and a punishment for us boldly venturing into space. It's not just the aliens that make these space horror stories chilling. It's the loneliness being all alone out there. Now let's talk about a game called Alien. Isolation. It's based on those famous alien movies and throws you onto an empty spaceship. Except for one thing, the alien. The game throws everything at you to make this creature terrifying. Your weapons don't work great. It can sneak through vents, and you can only track it with a tiny screen that makes you look away from what's in front of you. But the scariest part, it's not really about the alien, it's about where you are. Picture a space station that's like a haunted house, but without the cobwebs and creaky floors. It's dark, full of creepy corridors, hiding monsters. And you're stuck there with zero chance of rescue. The space around the station is like this massive horror scene itself. So scary that you might not even need the alien to get spooked. <laughs> Mysteries of early space dreams. Back in the late 1800s and early 1900s, people had this wild idea that Mars or the Moon might be teeming with unknown life. It didn't sound crazy, because back then, folks thought space was probably buzzing with extraterrestrials, especially when Earth was their only point of reference and it's full of life. Now, space travel, in those days, was portrayed a bit casually. In a 19th century novel by Jules Verne called From Earth to the Moon, the characters reach the moon by shooting their spaceship out of a giant cannon. I mean, why not? It's hard for us now to truly grasp what space is like. A place where your bones lose density without gravity, where days and nights don't exist causing insomnia, and where life seems silent and inhospitable. Let me tell you about a bizarre incident during the 1976 Soviet mission Soyuz 21. The plan was simple, a 60-day stay on the Salyut 5 space station. But just a few weeks in, the crew claimed there was this crazy odor filling the cabin, so toxic that they had to abort the mission. When the backup crew arrived, no strange smell was found. It was likely a powerful illusion, a terrifying nightmare brought on by cramped conditions and the psychological fear of the vastness of space. Maybe, just maybe, it's safer to stay grounded. <sighs> Apophis approaching. Our Earth is on a wild ride through space, and it's not always a safe one. Rusty Schweikart, a former astronaut, is raising alarms about an asteroid named Apophis, getting a bit too close for comfort. Schweikart knows the dangers of space firsthand, having been in charge of the lunar module during the Apollo 9 flight in 1969. Let me tell you a real-life scare. Back in 1908, a half-football field-sized object crashed near the Tunguska Forest in Siberia, causing the most massive explosion ever recorded on Earth. If that had hit a populated area, it could have been catastrophic. Asteroids, comets, and other cosmic debris, known as near-Earth objects, NEOs, are our closest and sometimes dangerous neighbors. While most are harmless, some can break through Earth's atmosphere, potentially causing significant damage. Remember the dinosaurs. An asteroid weeped them out 65 million years ago, creating an ecological niche that eventually led to the rise of mammals, including humans. Congress asked NASA to keep an eye on these space invaders. Telescopic technologies like NASA's Space Guard survey have detected over 90% of harmful NAOs, giving us a heads up on potential impacts. But it's the ones we haven't found yet that keep scientists on edge. Asteroids hitting Earth could unleash devastation, from shockwaves wiping out continents to debris setting the world on fire. 
The good news is, we now have the technology to prevent such disasters. We can literally alter the local solar system to make it safer for us. However, Earth's been through a lot, with asteroids continuously bombarding us. <laughs> the question is, can we change our cosmic surroundings enough to avoid the fate of the dinosaurs? Only time will tell. Fast forward to 2029, a rock named Apophis is making a close pass by Earth. It's expected to come closer than our communication satellites, a sight you might catch without binoculars. But there's a catch. If Apophis passes through a gravitational keyhole, a small space area, it could alter its trajectory, potentially leading to a collision in 2036. The chances of this happening are currently 1 in 45,000, but the impact could be catastrophic. Scientists are mapping out possible strike zones. And one alarming scenario is Apophis hitting the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California, triggering massive tsunamis with waves up to 50 feet high. So, as Earth rides the cosmic roller coaster, we're keeping a close watch, hoping to navigate the twists and turns of our space journey safely. As we delve into the haunting beauty of deep space, one cannot help but ponder the mysteries that lie beyond our celestial borders.